We've all heard of the saying that money doesn't buy happiness. However, would you be surprised if I was to tell you that we were wrong? Studies have actually shown that money can buy happiness. That is, if we learn to use it in the right way. Hi, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tay from Financial Tortoise, where we learn to grow our wealth slow and steady. Three academics, Elizabeth Dunn, Daniel Gilbert, and Timothy Wilson, published their study between money and happiness in their 2011 paper titled, If Money Doesn't Make You Happy, then you probably aren't spending it right. The core of their argument is as follows. Money allows people to live longer and healthier lives, to buffer themselves against worry and harm, to have leisure time to spend with friends and family, and to control the nature of their daily activities, all of which are sources of happiness. Wealthy people don't just have better toys, they have better nutrition and better medical care, more free time and more meaningful labor, just about every ingredient in the recipe for a happy life. Yet, they aren't that much happier than those who have less. So if money can't buy happiness, then why doesn't it? It's because people don't spend it right. So how do we spend money right to maximize happiness? The authors recommend eight principles to help us get more happiness from our money. The first way to spend money effectively to maximize happiness is to buy more experiences and have fewer material goods. Had a hard day at work? Or just receive bad news from your doctor? The common consoling advice is often, go out and buy yourself something nice. Something nice should make us all feel better, right? Well, though this advice is well-intentioned, research has shown that we're often happier when we spend on experiences rather than things. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say you have two ways you can spend $1,000. One, on a perfect hardwood floor for your kitchen, or another, a year-long cooking class with your partner. The new hardwood floor will be really nice, especially if you can find the exotic Brazilian cherry floors imported directly from the rainforest. However, with time, these quickly become nothing more than unnoticed ground beneath our feet. That exciting feeling that comes with selecting the perfect hardwood floor and seeing it for the first time in our home quickly fades away sooner than we'd like. However, a year-long cooking class with our partner continues to provide delight week after week, month after month. Not only are we learning something new each session, each cooking class is different from the one before. The cherry wood floorboard, on the other hand, generally has the same size, shape, and color on the last day of the year as they did on the first. And years from now, I'm pretty sure we'll remember the cooking class more often than the hardwood floor. Researchers believe that this occurs because we tend to connect experiences more centrally to our identities, defining us and shaping us more than financially equivalent material purchases. So if we want to maximize our happiness, when it comes to spending, focus on buying experiences versus material things. And sometimes you can even merge these two if you want to have the cake and eat it too. Instead of simply buying a bottle of wine to drink at home, purchase a wine tour with your partner. Instead of simply downloading a movie from online, visit the movie theater with your kids. I'm sure they'll remember that way more than just sitting at home scrolling through the movie on their iPad. The second way to spend money effectively to maximize happiness is to use money to benefit others rather than ourselves. It's a fact. Human beings are social beings. Without other people to socialize and interact with, we would literally die. The movie Castaway wasn't a movie about a man trying to survive on an island. Rather, it was a reflection of our deep desire for social connection. Why do you think Wilson the Volleyball had more screen time than Helen Hunt? Therefore, almost anything we do to improve our connection with others tends to improve our happiness as well. And that includes spending money. To test this theory, researchers approached individuals on the University of British Columbia campus, handed them a $5 or a $20 bill, and randomly assigned them to spend the money on themselves or on others by the end of the day. When the participants were contacted that evening, Individuals who had been assigned to spend their windfall on others were happier than those who had been assigned to spend the money on themselves. In addition to inducing happiness, pro-social spending has a surprisingly powerful impact on the social relationship in itself. Research shows that receiving a gift from a romantic partner has a significant impact on the recipient's feeling about the likelihood that the relationship will continue over the long term and lead to marriage. What do you think the global diamond market is a $2.5 billion industry? So if you want to boost your happiness, spend money on others, on charities you support, and even sometimes for random people. Ever pay the toll for the car behind you? Try it. For a couple of dollars, you can extract a feeling of elation that will last you throughout the day. The third way to spend money effectively to maximize happiness is to buy many small pleasures rather than few larger ones. The primary driver of this principle is our ability to adapt. Though that new car was super exciting the first week, after about a month, we adapt. It no longer holds that same level of excitement. The brand new kitchen counter was amazing when they brought it in. However, after cooking on it for a while, it doesn't induce the same level of spark that it did before. So if we inevitably adapt to the greatest delight that money can buy, then it may be better to indulge in a variety of frequent small pleasures. The extra guacamole at Chipotle. The feet massage you secretly craved. And why only a tall size? Let's go for the grande today. In one study, researchers tested adaptation and happiness using massage chairs. They divided the participants into two groups. One group of participants experienced a continuous 180 second massage, while the other group experienced a massage of 80 seconds, followed by a 20 second break, followed by another 80 second massage. Compared to participants who experienced one longer massage, those who experienced two shorter massages interrupted by a break found the overall experience more pleasurable. Participants who received a longer massage had adapted halfway through, so the latter half of the massage wasn't as pleasurable as the first half. However, participants who received two shorter massages 
had to experience the pleasure essentially two times. This highlights how well we respond to multiple shorter bursts of pleasure versus one longer one. When we can treat ourselves to small frequent pleasures, we can capitalize on the burst of delight that accompanies that first minute of massage, the first bite of magical cheesecake, and the first sight of the setting sun. Now, don't take this as we should never make large purchases, because the reality is we can't avoid them all in the spirit of maximizing happiness. However, money is finite, so if you have limited resources, it may best serve you to spend it on frequent small doses, because those spending will likely have the best return on your happiness investment. The fourth way to spend money effectively to maximize happiness is to ignore extended warranties and other forms of overpriced insurance. People buy extended warranties because of fear. Fear that our new LCD TV could get damaged, therefore it needs protection. We expect that the pain of losing $1,000 will exceed the pleasure of gaining $1,000. However, research has shown that this expectation can be sometimes flawed. In one study, researchers gave participants $5 and flipped a coin. Participants were told that if the coin came up one way, they would get an additional $5, and if it came up the other way, they would lose $3 of their initial endowment. Although the participants expected to be more emotionally affected by the loss of $3 than the gain of $5, they were not. Participants who lost $3 out of their initial $5 endowment were significantly less upset than they were expected because they framed the event as a $2 gain. Research like this suggests that buying expensive extended warranties to guard against the loss of consumer goods may be unnecessary emotional protection. Avoid extended warranties and spend that extra money to buy more of the small life pleasures that we talked about earlier. The fifth way to spend money effectively to maximize happiness is to delay consumption. Pay now and consume later. And the reason you want to do this is because of anticipation. Anticipation that there is something exciting waiting around the corner. Anticipation that I can enjoy a nice relaxed night out with my spouse after a hard day of work. The person who buys a cookie and eats it right away may get a certain unit of pleasure from it. But the person who saves a cookie until later not only gets a certain unit of pleasure when it is eventually eaten, he or she also gets all the additional pleasure of looking forward to the event. It's been proven that people reap a lot of enjoyment from anticipating an upcoming event even if the event itself is not entirely enjoyable. Delayed consumption can also create uncertainty which could promote happiness if applied the right way. For example, let's say a little boy in Toys R Us is eagerly clutching both a kite and a water gun. While the boy would probably experience immediate delight if the mother offered to buy both toys for him, research suggests more lasting pleasure if the mother told him she would return to the store the next day and buy him one of the two toys. He would derive much pleasure from fantasizing about water fights and flying kites on his way home, not knowing exactly which of the toys his mother was planning to buy for him. The number six way to spend money effectively for maximizing happiness is to consider how peripheral features of a purchase may affect our day-to-day -day lives. Especially when it comes to big, pie-in-the-sky purchases we think will give us the greatest level of joy. Most often, this is our ultimate dream home. Ask a young person what their ideal dream is, and a lot of them will answer owning their own home. A home with all the bells and whistles, a big living room to host family and friends, an Olympic-sized pool to do laps in, and a state-of-the-line kitchen to cook Michelin-level meals. Though the anticipation of all these features may excite the potential homeowner, many fail to digest all the peripheral costs that comes with such bells and whistles. When you have a big living room, it requires a lot of big furniture that needs to be bought, cleaned, and maintained. When you have an Olympic-sized pool, you need to hire a pool maintenance company to take care of it. When you have the state-of-the-line kitchen, you have more toys, but more toys that can break. It's not to say that we shouldn't have nice things, but recognize that when we have big pie in the sky dreams, we often have a natural tendency to forget the details and only see the things at high level. And this oversight matters because happiness is often in the details. On any given day, our experience is shaped largely by the immediate current situation. Emotions are oftentimes a result of daily life more than major life events. So when thinking about how to spend money, let's try to consider how a purchase will affect the way in which we spend our day-to-day -day time. That Olympic-sized pool is nice, but do I want to deal with the regular maintenance and specialized cleaning that's required? Maybe I'll be better off getting a membership at my local pool. The number seven way to spend money more effectively is to be aware of comparison shopping. When we're in the market to buy something, we naturally compare. We want to know if we're buying the best product out there. Though comparison shopping, when done moderately, can help us make the best decision, when taken to the extreme, they come at a cost. Comparison shopping taken too far could distract us from the attributes of a product that will be important for our happiness and satisfaction. Focusing our attention instead on attributes that distinguish the available options versus what is best for us. We see this often when it comes to home search. Before buying a home, people typically visit multiple open houses and viewings, scrutinizing the details of each property's features. Is the garage detached or attached? Is the second bedroom's closet walk-in or reach-in? Is the kitchen counter granite or marble? Through this process of comparison shopping, the features that distinguish one home from the other may come to loom large, while their similarities fade into the background. As a result, home buyers might overestimate the supposed pleasure of living in a big beautiful house versus a more modest home, leading them to take out a larger loan than necessary. Comparison shopping may overly focus a home buyer's attention on differences between available homes, leading them to overestimate the happiness impact of selecting a home with all the bells and whistles. Bottom line, be careful of comparison shopping. A moderate level is good to help us cement our decision, 
but after a while, we can make comparison our priority versus finding the best product for our specific need. The number eight way to spend money effectively is to pay close attention to the happiness of others. You've heard of the statement, don't follow the herd, be your own man or woman, don't let the herd decide for you. However, ironically, sometimes when it comes to making the most optimal decision for happiness, it may be most beneficial just to follow the herd. At times, the best way to predict how much we'll enjoy an experience is to see how much someone else enjoyed it. Just think about the last movie selection you made. How do we select what we're going to watch next? Do we scrub through the plot summaries, detail information about the cast and crew, and what new cinematography camera they used? Maybe if I'm a super movie buff, that could make a difference. However, most often, we ignore all the details about a movie's content and instead click on the ones with the highest ratings or the best reviews. And a good number of times, if someone else enjoyed the movie, there's a good chance I will come to enjoy it as well. Now, I want to highlight this may not be the case at all times, given we're all unique individuals, and I'm a big advocate of always questioning the herd. However, at times, it may best serve us to just follow the herd. This works especially well for me when it comes to more trivial items. What spatula should I buy? I could spend hours researching every type of spatula out there to see what is truly the best. But at the end of the day, given I don't cook much anyways, I would maximize my happiness by just picking the one from Amazon with the best ratings. Thank you guys for watching. In the spirit of happiness, if you want to know what items I splurge on, please check out my video here. Until next time, all the best.